Today I'm taking a check rate in a Mustang. I already have a Mustang type rating, but a proficiency check in a jet is required every 12 months. This proficiency check has to be in any jet for which uh, you hold a type rating, and once every 24 months you have to do it in the type you want to fly. This will allow you to alternate your recurrence. Today we are working with Don. Hi, Don. Hi, Max. The check rate we are doing today is essentially the same as initial. I hope you enjoy it. After all, check rates scare a lot of private pilots, but in reality it's a routine enjoyable flight. You fly, learn something new and become a little safer. Just take it easy and enjoy. Let me tell you a little bit about the plane we are flying today. Mustang is one of the first very light jets that appeared in 2000s. Back then, Piper and Diamond also had uh, their VLJ projects, but uh, in 2008 financial crisis killed those projects. Of course it was easier for Cessna, they took their 500 and 525 series, redid it and came out with a Mustang. It's a very simple plane, Cessna style plane. So the first thing we are looking for is uh, the seal. The seal is not inflatable on the Mustang. We want to make sure it's not torn anywhere, it's uh, glued correctly because it's a pressurized plane. We're gonna look for the static ports and make sure the pitot is open. Looking at the strut and tires. Looking at hydraulic pressure over here and hydraulic fluid. And we also have a chart which shows us the pressure. So it's about... Uh, actually right now uh, we already turned on the battery, but I checked it before. <laughs> so it's not the correct way to check it. Making sure the locks are okay, because the gear is held up by up locks and held down by uh, integrated locks in the actuators, in the hydraulic actuators. Checking the nitrogen pressure for emergency gear and brakes. Checking angle of attack vein, pita tube static ports, checking all antennas, going to the wing, looking at the boot, making sure the boot is glued, because if you have a fuel leak, it might actually be from under the boot. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> looking at the gear, making sure it's all good. Checking that the cap is closed correctly. Checking the NACA vent because if the fuel is not venting, the tank is going to implode. Lights. All lights are LED. Checking ailerons, making sure all the pins are in. Checking the speed brakes. In this airplane, they are electric in comparison to all other citations. But they're still citation style. Engine oil. This one is good oil filter bypass indicator, making sure all the static wigs are in place because we need all the static wigs on the wings for dispatch. Looking at the boot, looking at general condition of the tail, looking at the tail fins, making sure the rudder lock is unlocked. Even if it's locked, we can still pull the yoke towards us and it's gonna unlock. Checking oil here, and it looks like we do need some oil. I do. Yeah. Good. Connecting the battery. Checking circuit breakers. And checking fire extinguisher pressure. We have two brake hoses, one is hydraulic, one is nitrogen and anti-skid wire. Also checking the brake wire pin indicators with the parking brake set. When the pins are flush, it means brake pads need replacement. Checking ailerons, making sure all the pins are in. And we can feel the spring which inter interconnects the rudder and the uh, ailerons. Checking lights, checking boot. Okay. 
See, and the back has a feel of a classic car. Given that the, this particular plane has a bit of uh, wear and tear, I feel like I'm in an old Mercedes. We have a soft wall in the back. Classic. Feels like a Learjet. There is enough legroom for two, but if you put uh, four people in club seating, that's an overkill. In reality, usually would fly uh, four people on board. Two on the pilot seats and two in the back. In any case, if you have full tanks, uh, the plane can only carry three adults, maybe four. The quality of the interior is pretty good, nice materials, nice feel. By the way, where is the toilet? Here it is. What do we have here? We have a bag, guess why? Because there is no flush, so usually you would put uh, cat's mix. Left on a master is not belted. In any case, you will only use the left in an extreme emergency, or maybe small children might use it. Think about it, you got someone in the cockpit, someone in the back, and you have to go here? That's why airplanes with uh, no left, like Eclipse, are much better. Let's check out the weight and balance. Current aircraft weight is uh, 5,338 pounds, at maximum fuel 2,500 pounds and you get uh, 7,800 pounds. Our max takeoff weight is 8,645, so the useful load is about uh, 800 pounds. So four people, you can carry four people with full tanks. What do we have here? It opens up and locks in place. What do you think it is used for? Let me know in the comments down below. If you hold a jet type rating in UFA pilot certificate, it's for life. Even if you didn't fly a jet for 10 years, you can take a recurrent check and continue flying. Let's do it. Uh, Max, we're going to walk through today what would be representative of an FAA check ride, um, either for a type rating or a recurrent proficiency check. Okay. I use a plan of action which uh, details a briefing, which we will talk about. Uh, also details the knowledge requirements uh, for either a type rating or a proficiency check. Essentially, each one of the evaluations is, is conducted exactly the same. Uh, this is the knowledge portion, and um, we've got a short plan which details all of the flight mm -hmm. maneuvers that we will conduct as well. Um, as soon as we're complete with the knowledge portion, We'll take a look at uh, the local area and we'll map out a plan for the flight. Okay? okay. So as they say, the test has begun. Okay. So let's take a look um, at the first portion of the um, knowledge portion, which would be operation of the systems. We'll talk a little bit about each one of these systems, uh, some of the memory items that would we would apply in emergency yep. or abnormal situations. Okay. Um, so let's begin. Uh, we'll start with some of the limitations in the airplane. Okay. Such question is, uh, what kind of engines do we have on the aircraft? What we have we? a uh, Pratt & Whitney 615F engines, mm -hmm. which is a dual spool high bypass turbofan engine. Okay. It produces 1,450 pounds of thrust. Okay. Um, we've got two, two parameters that we look at to determine the engine output. We have N1 and we have N2. Yep. Um, what, what's the difference between N1? What is N1 a measure of and what is N2 a measure of? So basically N1 is your fan speed mm -hmm. measured in percent and that's uh, mainly your, um, your power output because uh, most of the thrust is created by fan especially at low altitude and N2 is your uh, core of your engine, your gas generator. So that's basically what produces power. Sure. So let's um, let's talk about the landing gear, Max. We put a landing gear handle down. What uh, what system do we have to extend that landing gear? Hydraulics. 
hydraulic system, basically. Very good. If the hydraulic system failed and we were unable to extend the gear normally, do we have any alternative system to extend the gear? Yes, we have an emergency extension system which uses A, gravity, and B, nitrogen pressure. If that hydraulic system failed, would we have normal braking? Uh, well, they're powered from one system, so we can expect uh, that we need to use emergency brakes. So describe the emergency brake system. How does that operate? We have a nitrogen bottle, and uh, there are nitrogen lines which go into the brake caliper, and the brake caliper has a shuttle valve. So it's very important that you remove feet from the brakes, so you know, the, if, if there is some hydraulic residue left over, it doesn't oppose the shuttle valve, and then pull the handle slowly. And basically, you have six applications, but it's always a good idea to pull the handle slowly, and uh, from what I heard, there is a delay, and obviously you lose anti-skid. Sure. So you should, you should, you know, choose the longest available runway. Very good, very good. Um, if we flew into icing conditions at altitude, and we accumulated ice, but we did not turn on the anti-ice, de-ice systems. What kind of a negative effect would we expect in crews? Uh, slower speed. Mm -hmm. uh, what about an approach? We're only an approach to the airport. If we loaded up with ice, we did not activate any of the systems. What danger would we be in there? Much higher stall speed, and then also possibility of tailplane stall. Although it is a T-tail, but still. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Max, do we have a method to do weight and balance today for the Mustang? Yep, I do it in the foreflight. Mm -hmm. So basically we get the weights from um, AFM. Mm -hmm. We plug them in and then plug in pilot and uh, co-pilot weights. So Max, let's do a sample loading. Let's fill it with fuel. Okay. Full. How many pounds of fuel can we put in the airplane, do you remember? Uh, it's 25 something, 25, 80 or something like that. That's correct, good. Yeah. So let's put full fuel. We'll put you, yourself and I in the airplane, and we'll put 200 pounds of baggage in the nose. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now we have, uh, we have CG, which is way forward of the, of the limit. So would we want to operate the airplane with that forward CG limit? Mm, definitely not. So, what danger do we have of operating the airplane with a forward CG? Uh, you have uh, you have much worse performance. You have mm -hmm. higher stall speed. You have lower uh, cruise speed. You have lower climb rate, and then also you have a danger that if um, if you're at slow speed, you might have not enough uh, elevator authority to raise the nose. Good. Max, that's about all I've got. Um, when we fly, don't worry about mistakes. I'm not highly concerned about the mistakes you do make because we're human, we all make mistakes. I'm concerned about the outcome. How do we fix that mistake, right? Yep. You forget to push a button and the airplane's not doing what you want it to do, take prompt action to get the airplane back where it needs to, um, and I'm happy with that, okay? Yep. Uh, you may see me making some notes as we're flying, okay? Note-taking will continue. Uh, I may have some questions in flight as well, okay? If I ask you a question, that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. So that doesn't mean that you need to change it, yep. okay? Uh, any questions? No. Okay, Max, let's go fly. Let's go. I'll file and we go. Very good. Starting engine number two. Engine start and two ignition ITT rising left engine start Maintain 2,000, expect 6,000, 10 minutes after departure. 
Departure frequency 119.4, squawk 3077. Is there a beam cover the sign? Yeah, yeah you're good. You're good. Okay, so we're gonna be departing on 15. If anything happens before we run, I'm gonna reject takeoff and stop on the runway. We have a really long runway, so I'm not gonna brake like crazy. I'm gonna use slight and brakes. So uh, we are safe on the run, so we stay on the runway basically. If something happens uh, or we have an engine failure at or above V1, I'm gonna continue takeoff, positive rate gear up, continue climb out at V2 to 1500 feet, it's a post time up, and then we're gonna execute uh, checklist as necessary. The weather is VFR and uh, we can just come back. Okay, very good. So we need these, uh, we're doing a normal takeoff, but we're gonna simulate a low visibility takeoff, so these have to be on by 100 feet. Okay. Okay. Another one, five. That's it. Board, board, board. Okay, good. You board. can continue. Okay. Brakes are retracted. When you cross check. One, rotate. Is it afraid of climb gear up? And buggles are down. And buggles are down. Keep. Number 680 Golf Runway 6, Clear Land. Runway 6, Clear to Land, 680 Golf. Cessna 195, tell you stuff. Cessna inside about a mile, mile and a half ahead of you. We're going to be doing the air work first? No, we'll do the air work later. Okay. We're going to do the full procedure. Uh, we're going to request... Cessna Whiskey Tango, traffic no faster, you get to send again. Cross center, cross center, cross center, cross center, cross Okay, cross out above 2,000, 7 Whiskey Tango. Take up. And we'll majority turn right hitting 270, climb the main same 4,000. 270 and 4,000, uh, 1 Lima Juliet. 26 kilo traffic, no factor, you can send a maintain 2,000 now. Cross Bob Blue at 2,000, you're clear for the RNF 3, Christian RNF 6 approach. Get the weather at... Let's work, ready for... Yeah, 1 Lima Juliet, quite direct Ravsi. Ravsi, enjoying the approach course inbound. Direct Ravsi, enjoying the approach course inbound, uh, 1 Lima Juliet. Perfect, she's reading off my plan of action. Uh, so 362 AM activate, which will send us direct to NEF, NEF mode set, get up there. If PFD failed, uh, display uh, backup button press if required, we did press flight director's uh, transfer uh, to operating PFD. Uh, transfer flight directors, uh, FD mode, re-engage, nothing to do, and uh, transponder, uh, uh, switch to transponder to com nav switch, PFD controls, uh, use operating PFD, if, uh, okay, procedure complete. Glide path is alive. Gonna go flaps uh, takeoff speed below 185. Flaps coming down to takeoff. Power is coming back to about. That should go. Function glide pass. Minimum snow runway. Full power. Let's take off. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. Looks like we're losing an engine. Okay. Good. We are above 400. And speed is good. One Lima Juliet is going missed. Can't take departure. One Lima Juliet. Alright. Okay, if you have zero and one, it means uh, the engine is most likely stuck. It ceased. 
So we cannot uh, we cannot uh, restart it because the shutter down. Engine failure precautionary shut down. Throttle affected engine. Left left engine. Cut off. If possible, the engine could remain at idle for a minimum of two minutes. Doesn't apply to us. We lost an engine. Generator switch. Left engine. Left generator. Off. Ignition switch affected side normal. It isn't normal. Electrical load. Reduce. Uh, okay. Uh, we lost an engine. Left engine ceased. We would obviously declare an emergency because it's a single engine uh, operation. Other than that, the approach is going to be as normal as possible. We're going to normalize the abnormal situation, but we will use uh, flaps uh, takeoff only, just in case we need to go missed. So we'll fly two of these approaches. Okay. Um, we'll fly one, two engine, we'll fly one single engine. We will execute uh, perhaps the RNAV runway four. Okay. Circle to runway three one or one three, one, three whatever, likely, we, yep. whatever it is that they want us to use. Okay, so we'll execute those two precision approaches. We'll execute this circling approach. We'll execute the in-flight maneuvers that we need to do. Steep turns, stalls, unusual attitudes. Okay. Thank you. And uh, one Lima Julie is ready for the approach. Right, uh, 300 vectors for approach, uh, one damage alert, 300 set. Miss approach is straight ahead 1000, and right turn to, uh, to Mambo and hold minimum 700. In the event of missed, uh, 180 and 3000, one damage alert. Right. Just let it follow the glide slope and uh, press out later, so I'll set 3000 and our minimum is 700. We are clear for the approach. All is good. MMS. Should we call tower? Only my Juliet. Uh, the tower uh, must sunk. Uh, 771 Dima Juliet is uh, joining the approach outside of Jurat, uh, Arna 4, Circle 1 3. Report crossing Jurat, uh, 1 Dima Juliet. Build inside, heading mode, 1 Dima Juliet is on the circle. 1 3, clear for the option, uh, 1 Dima Juliet. Down, autopilot off, leaving MDA. Yeah, down. Play green. Yeah, damper off. So what we wanna do is we wanna make nice bank since we're low and slow. Two white, two red. Disregard the system. It doesn't know that we're doing a circle. Go around, go around power, flaps take off, positive freight gear up, heading climb at zero, 400 feet flaps up, heading cloud, and 30,000. Okay, you got the controls. My control. You got the controls.
Alright. Okay. So, uh, since I don't know what engine, the biggest thing is to keep the speed under control so we don't uh, extend the runway. So we don't use more runway than necessary. And we got the frequency automatically identified on the G1000. Now, since we're clear for the approach, I'm gonna select approach mode. Lock, maybe by some place, lock is armed. Okay, glass lock is alive. Here is coming down. Alright, runway is on site. Continue. Thank you. Yeah, the emperor comes off. Yeah, I'm good. Today you saw how jet type ratings are done. A check rate like this is needed for your initial type rating and every year thereafter. I try to keep current in 5 types out of my 9 type ratings. About the Mustang, I haven't flown it for a while. Uh, when you fly it, it feels a lot bigger than it actually is. It has a bit too much yaw and pretty heavy on controls. Well, it's a nice little plane, first very light jet. Learn to fly a jet, subscribe to my channel Max Jet Review, follow me on Instagram, that jet pilot. See you!